Oh, my. 40, I had never 29. heard that. Oh, you didn't know that story? 29. I never knew that. Peter, Mr., you know, Johnny on the spot with all the right, red Gatorade. Right, right. And uh, he thinks he's getting the in, like, oh, yeah, I got Gatorades for part you. Part of the story they didn't is Kerry Collins was in the limo because Lee was recruiting because he was a senior in, high, in college. Penn State. Coming out of Penn State. Right. And he's like, oh, I'll hang out with the Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> all, oh, he was right across from me, so he, he got it all. Wow. Well, that's good, though, because Peter is, like, notorious for coughing on everybody. and ha, 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 ha. So he, he needed that a little needed bit. A little he bit. to get him back. Yeah. Does it seem like it's been 29 years? No. It, for me, it's fast, of course, when you live it. But for other people, uh, for the 49 organization, it does. Uh, it's been, you know, for a team that has, uh, you know, other than from 2000 to 2010, there was like a Roll dead zone there. Right, right. But really in the last 15 years, they've been almost as efficient as what we were in the 80 to 2000. So, uh, but they'd be in the mix. And so the 49ers never lost the Super Bowl. That was the theme. And now we've lost a couple. Yeah. So now we're back and, you know, there's a, like any organization that's built to go the distance, like the expectations the 49ers always have, there's so much more more writing emotionally that if you don't get it done, it's it's like almost double bad. Yeah, right. You know, like right. you can, it, a lot of teams will get there like, oh my gosh, we got the Super Bowl, we lost, but man, it was a great season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 49ers, it's not like, there. no, it's right. like a... It's like the Yankees. You don't say, like, I'd yeah. rather have not gotten there, because right. that's stupid. Right. But in some ways, it feels I like maybe you. it's like, it's so painful. Right. I remember hearing you say years ago, too, that the farther you go up the playoff tree, the more it hurts when oh, it's finally time to pull the plug. I mean, honestly, the pain of the Cowboys in 92, that's the most painful moment I've ever had in my athletic career by far. And to, and to leave the field knowing that they're now, they have the podium and they're up there with Terry Bradshaw. That was worse than 93, the 92 uh, Yeah, 93 was, was, yeah, 92 was the one, that, because they were, were still home. young. Yeah. They were still not completely formed. Right. And uh, and that for, that's what got it started. Now yeah. it just got worse. Right? Right. It just got harder. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and that was the, that was painful. Uh, and yeah, I throw up in my mouth every time I talk about it. <laughs> oh, but it makes it even better in '94 when you finally beat them. That makes it well, even that, better. I agree with that. I mean, because the, the 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 Cowboys only got better. Yeah. So the challenge only got more. Right. And so you're talking about two teams, it's two Goliaths. Goliaths. Just going at it like you know Godzilla and and and. Uh, King Kong, like we just, and you, everyone knew it. We just waited for it, and then bam. And so, yeah, getting one, Mike, had to happen. You know what I mean? But those, that first one was, yeah, I'd rather just move on. Super Bowl morning, you wake up that morning, like, pits in your stomach, right? There was so, I want to tell everybody, there was so much pressure on you. You were, took over for yeah. Joe. I'm just trying to give the audience a little background yeah. here. Well, Everyone's, you, you gotta, can't do it. Joe did it. Yeah. Right? All that crap. Well. <laughs> so it was the pit not, like, how, Just one little, little yeah. anecdote in 1991 right. when I took over. Right. It was mid-season and the Gulf War had broken out in the Middle East. Yeah. And it was like November, uh, October of 1991. Uh, yeah. And the San Francisco Chronicle, above the fold, San Francisco Chronicle was a headline, big, huge headline. The Gulf War, it's Steve Young's fault. <laughs> Super funny, right? I'm, right. right. That's right. What I'm living yeah. that front page every day. Yeah. And so, yeah, you go to the morning of the Super Bowl. Yeah. You can imagine that maybe I was, like, could I even stand up? Right. For whatever reason, when you're, and you know this, Chris, you're in the, you're in the mix every week. Right. And you get into a flow. And I think if you would have asked me the, the, the game that would maybe maybe felt like that more was the, the two Dallas weeks game. Uh, that's where I was right? going to go with this. Yeah. So I feel okay. like, but look, I knew that that Super Bowl was going to define my life, yeah. one way or another. Right. And so that feeling is odd, and I don't know that you could ever want to be in that spot every day of your life. Right. But I remember just I remember Mike Shanahan. I call Mike. Let's go over it against Shanahan. Oh, that's right, his name, right, right, right. Let's right. go over it against. So and he Super had to Bowl, tell you to stop. Right. Well, no, he's like, let's go over it again. Let's yeah, go over yeah, it again. Yeah, right. Finally, he said, look, we've done enough. Right. We're going to throw eight touchdowns. <laughs> and when he said that, I, I chuckled. I was like, that's right. funny, Mike, you know. And if we had four at halftime. He said, I told you. So it's the, he helped me a lot that morning. Yeah, to feel confident through that and mess, feel good. With that mess. Yeah, because, like, I, I, my next question was going to be, like, did you feel like on that day when you took the field, like, it was kind of inevitable? Because you mm. just beat the Cowboys. Yeah, but you know better. Right. You know better. Right. You've watched enough. Right. You, 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 the Chargers were a tough-minded team. Right. They they came kind of out of they went to Pittsburgh and they beat the Steelers at, at home. They were a tough-minded group. And I remember Stanley Richards all week there during the during the Super Bowl. He's like the middle of the field's closed. 
where no one comes in. The, well, I'm the sheriff. We don't get the, <laughs> and I remember the first play. Like, the <laughs> right third down play, the middle. Like, right. I'm run Was by that Stan, Ricky Waters? I run that by one? Stan. Like, where's yeah. the, the clothes <laughs> open? Like, I, I can't tell. Uh, <laughs> so, but nothing about the Super Bowl. People say, oh, it was a wipeout. Everyone knew that. Look, it's the NFL. You yeah. don't mess around yeah. until it's over. That's right. At what point, though, did you did you feel like I this is good the at floodgates time. are open? I mean, we were up at halftime, but they were they, they were pesky. They were around, and I think when we scored to go up, I can't remember exactly. It was the fifth. It was probably the forty-two yeah. touchdown. Right. It's like then, you know, we yeah, had a it was over. Spot. Yeah. Right. So uh, fast forward to today, when you look at the NFL and you see all the great play callers out there, is there someone that stands wait, out? Wait, that all? Because I only well, I see less than ten. Okay. Well, I, I, I agree fair. with you there. This, see, people, like he knows, we talk about this a lot. We hear a lot of, oh, there's a quarterback problem. I always go, there's an offensive coordinator problem, right? All right. 100%. Okay. No, Bad there's preamble both. to there's the question. Both. Okay. There's both problems. Yeah. But there's, there's as many great quarterbacks as there are as many great innovative offensive right. coordinators. Which one would you want to work with? I, I've said this many times, and this is, I, honestly, this is not uh, no, a Homer, I, a homer yeah. answer. If you said to me, Steve, Anywhere in the league, run. You can play at your age. You can go back and play. Where would you run? I would run down the street to Kyle Shanahan and to John and what they've built, the talent. But it's the innovation that Kyle has. Right. They think he's an innovative run game guy. Yeah. He's like his dad. It's like, if I need to run, I'm going to innovate through that. Throw it. Give me a guy, you know, Patrick Mahomes, I'll figure out that part of it. So he, he's an innovative. You watch it every week with the plays that he calls. Yeah. He manages the position so well when he doesn't have everything that yeah, he wants. right. And a he superstar gets, or whatever. amazing. Right. You know, he's right. been begging for somebody who could, what Mike said to me back in the day, Steve, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to innovate. I'm going to call every play. I want you to protect me. Yeah. That was the most empowering thing when he said right. it. I think that that's why Brock's growing into that space with Kyle. Yeah. Look, I'm going to call it. You protect me. Right. And that's a powerful, that's a powerful relationship if they can get completely there. Well, I, so... Like, take us there. I want you to talk about both quarterbacks, really. Like, Purdy with all this, you know, bull crap, game manager, system guy, right? But it's not, look. It's not, Brock, I know. No, but it is, because Brock at the end of the game uh, last week, what did he say? I'm not the biggest. Yeah. I'm not the strongest. Right. I'm not the fastest. Right. The prototype today is a dynamic move the, move around, go get the yards with your legs, yeah. throw it in the pocket, stiff off the defensive lineman, right. sprint out, cross throw a the side field. Arm ball. Right. right, right. He's not that. Yeah. And he's telling you, right. I'm not that. So get it out of your head. Yeah. So everyone else, you can call him whatever you want. Right. He is not the prototype. Yeah. And when you're not the prototype and you're drafted last in the game, people are going to... Yeah. But what he is, is he is, I, I said with Indiana Jones, like he is somebody owns the data, you know that was the big part of the of yeah. great football is I own the data, right. and I am somebody that, I, the spatial relationships with 22 people, it doesn't bother me, Yeah, I get it. Right. And then that, I call it the force, like the Star Wars, like I get that whole thing, yeah. so call a play, I know, I know the play, what you're trying to do, I can get the ball out very quickly, very efficiently, yak, all the stuff that happens when you put the ball out early, I'm super efficient, and if I get in a jam, I'm not stupid. I'm right. not, if I make a mistake, I'm not going to make two. Right. If I make, you know, and so I think in that way, he's somebody who can play for a long time. Yeah, definitely. And I said that about bad. Mahomes. It looks flashier. It looks crazier. It looks more frenetic with Mahomes when he does it. But it's the same idea. They know where their body fits within the other 21 guys on the field, where I can get to, how I can get there. It's much more efficient and compact with Brock Purdy. But it's all about knowing how to get from point A to point B without getting clobbered. And that's the ultimate compliment I want to give Patrick. Because Patrick came in the league as Superman. Yeah, right. I can do anything. And right. he did. Right. But, Mike, you make the point. He actually, after the Super Bowl lost the Bucks, yeah. went back to school. Right. And calmed everything down and said, you know what? Andy told him, to play great football in this league, you can't just put on yeah. the cape. Can't go you got to be yard. Clark Kent. Right. Clark Kent is the person behind this. Is the game manager. Right. Right. Is this one. Just, I'm going to call a great play. Run the play. Get the drop it off for three yards, then run the next play and drop it off for four. And then the Superman cape can come on. It's the maturity of Patrick Mahomes through the years that this year, especially in the playoffs, he looks like a veteran now. With right. that game, just drop it off, drop it off, yeah, drop it off, right. run the football. Right. Right. Patience. Then, if I have to put the cape on, no one can put it on better than him. But let's go to Josh Allen. He's asked to put it on too much. Yeah. And because of that, it we say this all the time. It, it falls apart. It can't apart. always be him. It can't. Right. Got so it falls else. apart. Right. Patrick is in that space now. And, Mike, I give Patrick Mahomes tremendous credit because the challenge of being able to be Superman and then go back to be Clark Kent, 
That's a maturity issue, and he showed that maturity to be both. And he's only going to get more mature, and he's only going to get better. 100%. I said, I was making people miss with my legs when I was 38 years old. It doesn't go away. Yeah. So the idea that you, oh, over the years you slowed, no, you, you always have that ability, but the smarter you get in the pocket, in the open game of the NFL today, I mean, both of us would love to play today. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it looks so much fun. Yeah. Wide open. Right. And so Patrick Mahomes got a fast start. You think about if he keeps this up for 15 years, yeah, right. 18 years, right. he'll have 100,000 yards. <laughs> he might. You're, you're exactly <laughs> you right. You think he'll catch Tom Brady seven? You need a lot of help. And, a, and some things just break in your way. It's just like this weekend, something will happen. It'll break one way or another. But, yeah, he can. I mean, he gets the help. He's that kind of a guy for sure. You're uh, well, you know what? No one should say seven is for sure. Yeah, no. That's insane. But if he gets this one this week. I can't believe I just week, said that. But, 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 just a, he could <laughs> already, I mean. But you get this least, one this week, you feel it's like, It's easy to say, but closer. if he has three. Yeah, right. You can almost make the case right. he should already have three or four. Right. So in that way, you can, uh, you can rightfully say yes, but it's hard. When you say seven, it's insane. I know, it's, it's insane. insane, right? It's, it's insane. insane. It really is. Uh, why do you think we're a dying breed? Right? Like, where did the lefties go in football? Well, where have the lefties been? Uh, you're right. Where have they been? Right? But, so, I mean, you're the greatest lefty of all time. We right? had a few in your era. Jim Zorn, Kenny Stabler. Boomer. Boomer, right? Then, the, you know, me and Michael Vick, Mark Brunel. Mark. Right? You know, now the, we got two of them. We can put them on it. two hands, right? Right. right. Football's a right-handed sport. Yeah. More than any other sport that I can think of. Yeah. Because it really, every installation, every play is written. You have to draw up a right or left. Right. And it and, always is and, right. And everybody, every coach is And then the, what doesn't make any sense to me, Mike, is that there's 10% of the population is lefty, and that's not represented in the NFL. No. Are the, all the great left-handed throwers playing baseball? Yeah, right. That's what I've heard. Yeah. There is a... There's a bias. Yeah. People in football don't like lefties. They don't. Coaches don't want to. Don't. Co I don't want to turn it over. I don't want to do I a play action play. or a boot this what way. What they don't understand right? is right. we're left-handed, but we un we have been trained in right-handed football the whole way, our so whole don't, life. So don't right. stop. Right. Like we, right. we do it your way. Don't <laughs> think of us that way. But they, they have this archaic, immature, stupid bias <laughs> that, like, like Michael Penix, I'm sure everyone's right. like, well, yeah. he's lefty, and yeah. I'm like, Michael's are probably scratching his eyeball out. Like, yeah. what are we doing? But it's got to give you an advantage, too, because the defense is preparing against right-handed quarterbacks every single week, and now Mike, all of a sudden what, it's what, all different. You're one of the innovative minds. Why aren't you one of the offensive coordinators in the league? Yeah. We need you, because yeah. that's exactly yeah. right. It is an advantage, yeah. because I can play righty football, but I can play lefty football, too. Yeah, right. There's an advantage in it. There Chris is. knows that as there well. There is. There, or, or in a game, when you do run to your left or you do stuff like that a few times, I'd always get a defensive guy every now and then. Like, damn, I forgot you were a lefty. lefty. Damn it, I, th I forgot you were coming out this way. Um, I do want to give you some love in this, which, I mean, I grew up watching you, and you were, of course, an idol to me because I was a lefty like you. <laughs> Uh, my son is growing up in the mean streets of Greenwich, Connecticut. Mean streets, my Greenwich. That's, okay. that's my home. That's and he is like. definitely not getting a laissez-faire upbringing. I heard him on the phone Stop. the other day. Stop. I've been trying, I have been trying to you make up for it. Honestly, that was one of the greatest mistakes of my life. Oh, stop, Steve. It was. We have I, honestly, and I, I'll tear up thinking hey, about it. When and I will go no, to my grave no. telling the Don't Sims family again. I screwed it up. Don't. Uh, never again. Don't one worry. thing we but know. know what, but, but, but forgiveness comes yes. over time. Right. And we move on. Yeah. One thing we know, when you talk extemporaneously all the time, you are going to step in shit from time now, to time. Okay. But we worry. do it all but, the time, and sometimes we jump thing. in it with both so feet. I, I, I really appreciate Chris and Phil for their forgiveness. Oh, come because, on, Because uh, it means a lot to I me. Don't know, he, he wants to just poke the bear there a little bit. No, I was trying to think of a way to bring it up. I actually, Mike, haven't misspoken very often in my life. I have. So when I have... Uh, it you remember it. It right. sticks with you. Right. right. So, but I wanted to tell you, in honor of you, my son, who was going to a little private school for like two years, he made the switch back to public. He's in seventh grade. Mean right? streets. Because he wants to go to Greenwich High School play and play on Steve Young's field. Right. <laughs> Greenwich High School's got a great home stadium, and it says Steve Young on the top. Let me tell and you, it's really Chris, cool. The people, don't, people think Greenwich would be the tennis golf school. Best the football public, team in the state. It is the best football team in the state. Exactly Mike, right. I know you wonder about that, but it really is true. Yeah, no, I hate, I've, I've been on the mean streets of Greenwich. I've survived <laughs> the mean streets. I'm glad you got out. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so uh, tell us what you have going on with Dove. So Dove called me. I, 
uh, Chris, the first, uh, Mike, the first year in California history in uh, CIF sports, they allowed girls to play flag football. Yeah. My girls, a senior and a freshman, went out for it. Right. The coach, after they'd gone out and made the team, they said, hey, do you want to come help? I went over and helped, and I was blown away at the emotion that the girls had in being included. Right. They didn't know the game, but they were included. By the end of the season, yeah. both of my girls at different times said, this is my favorite sport. Oh. And all the girls felt that way. So Phil, so Dove called me and said, we have this stat that oh, half of the girls in America, when they turn 14, leave sports because of how I feel about my, how oh, I feel right. in my skin. Right. So they've created a scientifically backed process for coaches to use language, use proper, you know, just the, how to empower and inspire girls to stay with their sport. Right. And they called me and said, do you mind go process like that, that for us? I'm like, after what I watched this fall, yeah. I'm in. Right. So I, I, I have a lot of emotion around girls playing sports, the empowerment, and then obviously flag football is now in the Olympics. Yeah, girls flag amazing. One. Girls flag football will take over gymnastics. Wow. In 10 years. Wow. It's gonna. It's it's an explosive thing. Wow. It's everywhere. It so, is. It's really cool to see. So you know the empowerment for girls and Dove. I'm, I appreciate you bringing me on and talking about it yeah. a little bit. Yeah. All right, uh, awesome. Steve. Congratulations on all your success. It's great to see him. The MVP of Super Bowl 29. The last time the 49ers won it. Steve Young. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, Steve. Lefties rule. Lefties That's rule, right. baby. All right, we'll all be back with PFT Live right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.